typically uh, a lot of people's time in all industries uh, are spent it, more gathering information, okay, than actually uh, thinking about it and producing, you know, new content. Um, just because it's a difficult and time-consuming task to do. Now, you know, with uh, uh, tight embeddings uh, and other, uh, you know, models, it'll be much more efficient to uh, augment, uh, you know, queries or ideas that you have that are much closer, you know, to what you want. That'll really give you a jumping off point, right, to create more uh, impactful drafts. Synthesia. Hello, Sherry. How are you today? I'm doing great, Brett. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm excited to have you. I, I think a lot of people are excited to learn more about Amazon Bedrock, and I think we're going to talk about Titan a little bit today. And maybe to give people a little bit of background, if you haven't met Sherry before, uh, before coming to AWS, I believe, Sherry, you were uh, the co-head of AI Labs at BlackRock. You were in Chief Data Analytics Officer at Millennial Management, at Credit Suisse. Uh, you had 21st Century Technologies, uh, which uh, I believe you were the founder of and were there for, for many years. And I, I think in that case, you were mostly doing work with government. Is that correct? That's right. I was doing work for the national intelligence agencies. Exactly. Okay. So you went from intelligence to finance to general applications now at AWS, yes. right? Um, so maybe just to start this off, I, I thought it would be really interesting to talk to you about sort of the evolution of big data into generative AI and what you think is maybe some of the flashpoints or some of the things that you were think are interesting over that, over that evolution of your career in the space and technology. Yes. I would say um, perhaps 10 to 15, you know, going back maybe 10 to 15 years, you know, I think one of the most interesting, you know, applications that have come, that has come up is mobility analytics. And so this was, you know, being able to uh, spot people in a specific location using GPS. And that has roots uh, in the military intelligence applications uh, uh, that I had, you know, worked heavily in. And so I, I view that as a uh, era, you know, uh, that brought in a lot of different e-commerce, you know, applications. You know, the ML, you know, AI ML, you know, has always, you know, been progressing, but, you know, I would say 2019, you know, perhaps is the next, you know, flashpoint for me, uh, which is uh, the rise of transformer technology and the parallelization uh, of being able to, uh, you know, uh, compute uh, large, you know, uh, language models, right, in parallel versus this, the serialized uh, recurrent networks that, that were there prior. Um, obviously, there's been uh, uh, more and more data, you know, we live in a world now of petabytes, you know, when I started, uh, you know, 16K, you know, was, was a lot. Uh, you know, back when I was, uh, you know, very young. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I, I would say those are the, uh, certainly the flashpoints. And then after, you know, Transformers, lots more applications in large language models, uh, as well as, uh, you know, image and, and video, uh, uh, you know, generators have been built. Yeah, fair enough. Let's talk about Bedrock. Uh, I think Amazon's taken a slightly different approach than some of the other players in the market uh, with the Bedrock approach. And maybe you could lay out for everyone a little bit about AWS's strategy, Amazon's broader strategy around uh, generative AI. Sure. Uh, and then specifically Bedrock. Sure. So we believe that there is no uh, one model, you know, to rule them all. You know, we believe that different... Uh, large language models or image models uh, uh, are applicable, uh, you know, specific to situation. And so uh, Bedrock uh, is a Gen AI application with uh, both uh, 1P, which is uh, uh, the Titan models built by Amazon, 
AWS, as well as uh, 3P models uh, built by uh, other providers such as uh, Anthropic, Stability AI, Meta, uh, and, and many others. So that's the overall philosophy. And the reason why we believe this um, is that, you know, when a customer has a, a, a problem, you know, such as in um, uh, uh, any kind of, you know, chat, you know, uh, application, uh, chances are the customer is going to need to access their own database to satisfy the customer uh, transaction. And to do so, uh, uh, we've developed on Bedrock um, agents uh, for Bedrock, which allows uh, customers uh, in a codeless way to uh, implement agents uh, backed by Bedrock LLMs for specific objectives. Um, so it's Bedrock uh, is designed uh, really for uh, software developers and uh, analysts, you know, to be able to create these applications uh, in a very uh, seamless manner. Yeah, one of the interesting things I think about the generative AI space is that most enterprises already, and, and a lot of smaller businesses as well, already have relationships with one or more of the cloud providers. And if you're an AWS shop, uh, you know, super important that you're able to spin up the new application, the new capability as, as quickly as possible. And one of the things that was really interesting, I talked to um, your colleague Atul Deo recently for the podcast that will be coming out maybe next week. And, you know, this idea that AWS is also with Bedrock, you can basically just spin up a model and you can start working with it right away. But then you also have other options where you could actually just run it separately and um, in a different environment and things like that. And so one of the things I'm sort of interested in is this idea of flexibility as well. And because like you've worked in government, you've worked in um, in finance, uh, this idea that like not just you can choose your model, but you can choose how your model is run and how you interact with it in the cloud environment. Uh Yes, I think that will um, also become um, more and more important um, as as things you know progress. Uh, we do have uh, different ways to interact uh, with models now. So we have Bedrock, which is you know the managed service. We also have SageMaker, where uh, uh, it's more. For, develop more for scientists where they could really, you know, go deeper and have more um, interaction, you know, different kinds of interactions, you know, with the model uh, hosted in different ways. Um, so, so we do offer, uh, you know, other applications uh, or other different ways to uh, interact with the model. And, and when as a user, would I select to go with Bedrock versus SageMaker? Uh, so SageMaker is really designed for scientists. Uh, and so there, uh, you know, uh, you would, uh, you know, look to develop, you know, uh, more specific applications, you know, where Bedrock is really designed and, you know, horizontal uh, enterprise level applications level. Absolutely. Okay. So the, one of the other things I think a lot of people are very interested in is Titan. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're familiar with lots of different types of large language models. Titan is one of the more recent uh, arrivals on the block. Uh, it's, it's based on technology. I know that's been around for, for quite a while. And I think there's three different versions out right now. The embeddings one is one that's been in, uh, implemented. And then there's a couple others. And I'm sort of interested in, uh, in terms of having different flavors of Titan, why are there different flavors? And you know, when are they going, when are they all going to be available? Because I think some people were, were I, I had someone ask me today on social media, oh, definitely ask Sherry when we're gonna get access to Titan beyond the embeddings. Mm. Uh, good questions. So uh, the Titan embeddings model was uh, GA uh, September 28th. And that model is primarily focused on search. So you input, you know, a query and the output, you know, is a uh, a real number, uh, but it's really designed to retrieve relevant uh, uh, text via a vector database using via vector database. 
Now we also have different flav other flavors of Titan other than embeddings. Uh, Titan text, which is the generative uh, uh, model, um, as well as Titan image, um, where you uh, input uh, uh, text and you get output a video, uh, output an image, or output uh, 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 videos uh, as as well. Um, those uh, will be announced, uh, we expect, uh, soon. Oh, you have um, a big event coming up. I forgot about that. So maybe that would be good timing for people. Uh, so uh, certainly stay tuned uh, for uh, more news uh, about our uh, uh, upcoming uh, launches. Okay, got it. And so, you know, Titan Embeddings, uh, you talk about like retrieval and search or like knowledge management systems, which is probably the most popular use case I'm seeing right now in enterprises. Mm -hmm. They're basically, mm -hmm. they, enterprises have a lot of data. A lot of it's a natural language, mm -hmm. uh, throw it into a vector, a vectorized database and then apply something like Titan to the front end in order to people that can query that. You've been dealing with large data for or big data for a long time. A lot of that early on by necessity was uh, numerical data. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we didn't really have the tools in order to be able to utilize natural language on structured data mm -hmm. uh, very well. Like, how significant of a change do you think this is for organizations to be able to to use the same type of tools that we were using for numerical data a decade ago and applying that to unstructured natural language data? I think it's going to be super. I think it's going to you know substantially change how businesses work. And here's why. Um, typically, uh, a lot of people's time in all industries uh, are spent it, more gathering information, okay, than actually uh, thinking about it and producing, you know, new content. Um, just because it's a difficult and time-consuming task to do. Now, you know, with uh, uh, Titan embeddings uh, and other, uh, you know, models, it'll be much more efficient to uh, augment, uh, you know, queries or ideas that you have that are much closer, you know, to what you want, that'll really give you a jumping off point, right, to create more uh, impactful drafts, right, uh, uh, or, you know, just creating summaries of the news of the day. Right. Whereas people um, maybe 10, 15 years ago used to do that, you're going to see much more of that automated or uh, uh, human in the loop um, instrumented. I think more human in the loop instrumented mm -hmm. um, for these uh, types of results. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that I heard a lot of prognosticators say, like a year ago, or so let's say it's almost a year since chat GPT moment, everyone's like making predictions. And one of the things they said is, okay, this is amazing, but government finance and healthcare aren't going to touch it for a while because you can't trust it because of hallucinations and all these other types of things. And what I'm actually seeing is government finance and healthcare are some of the most aggressive early adopters of it. Obviously the technology and software companies are doing it as well. And it seems very logical to me because they have the most unstructured natural language data. They have the, the hardest time of sort of accessing that. I, since you've worked in all those industries, well, maybe actually you were in, you, you worked in healthcare too many years ago in bioinformatics. So like, what's your perspective on this? Because I, I keep telling people is like, there's a lot of different use cases. And if you have so much unstructured data, it's like, this is something that has arrived just in time for you. A hundred percent. I mean, so the uh, government, uh, you know, has always wanted to capture, uh, you know, various uh, capture intelligence to be able to help, you know, and advise the president and Congress uh, of good policy, right? And the, the ability to use Gen AI, right, from imagery, uh, data, and query. Uh, you know, from a single desktop, you know, I want to see uh, pictures of a particular image, as well as all commentary associated with that image is really, really powerful, right? So um, uh, 
I believe they will be uh, uh, very big adopters. And I think similar analysis holds for finance, right? If you're uh, investing in crops, right, or corn, right, a, a commodity trader, and you want to know situations, you can ask similar queries and get very up-to-date uh, content rather than having to, in the older days, drive out to, you know, various cornfields and look at them, you know. Um, so I think uh, it, it, it's going to, it, it will be revolutionary, you know, in all of these uh, areas. Yeah, so a, so a national security case officer, a, a, an investment manager, and a salesperson, frankly, all have the same functional need. Exactly. There's a lot of data out there that you want to put it all together and make sense of it quickly. Exactly. And that's, again, you know, why uh, I believe this, uh, uh, you know, our philosophy of using bedrock, where you're, you're serving specific uh, customer needs powered by different LLMs, you know, it is, will in the end be the, uh, you know, an optimal customer solution for what these these types of customers are looking for. And is your expectation that really that the customization of these foundation models is is the key? And there's a lot of people who are using them without much customization, just a little bit of like light fine tuning today. Um, do, you, do you think that that's going to be sort of the predominant piece and we're going to have like more sort of general purpose or is it really going to be these more heavily customized either for knowledge management or other types of tasks? I think it depends on the task. I mean, if you're in the business of uh, working with consumers every day, right, you know, on returns or, you know, various transactions, then you probably want, you know, a fine-tuned model that can really speak on specific policies um, uh, definitively, you know, to the customer. You know, on the other hand, if you know, you're a salesperson or a case officer, as you mentioned, or a an financial analyst, you may, um, you, you may want to have customized models for the specific domain that you're working on, but you also want to make sure the models aren't regressing so that they're not, so you still keep that analysis, right, and logic that a fine-tuned, uh, a, a good LLM is able to give you. So I would say it depends. Yeah. We should have talked about regression. I wanted to talk to you about governance, but I think we've run a little bit long. Thanks so much for taking some time today. What do you recommend people do in terms of looking at, at bedrock and sort of understanding how it's maybe different than what they're, they've experienced going to just like an, an API for another LLM provider? Uh, I would suggest coming to our website uh, on Amazon uh, bedrock and checking us out. Perfect. Sherry okay. Marcus, thanks so much for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Synthedia, the business and technology of generative AI. Generative AI, synthetic media, large language models, image generators, virtual humans, voice clones, deep fakes, chat GPT, and more.